afternoon, everyone. My name is Pedro Raposo, and I'm a curator at Uniprot. In this webinar, myself and Yvonne Lucy, another curator at Uniprot, are going to talk about the Blast and the Line tools integrated into Uniprot's website. And we are going to discuss how you can use these tools in order to get the most out of them and how to explore its results. To start with, Uniprot is the world's leading high quality and freely accessible resource of protein sequence and functional information. It has a reliable data as we have teams of expert curators reviewing literature in order to describe what proteins do. And Uniprot is a massive resource uh, because it currently has a quarter of a billion proteins that cover more than 2 million different taxa. And we provide information on protein function, interactions, pathways, etc. We also provide protein sequences alongside its stable identifiers. Besides protein information, we have integrated tools in order for you to easily use them for your own analysis. And the Uniprot Consortium is composed of three different teams. These are Embel EBI from the UK, the Protein Information Resource from Washington DC in the US, and the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics from Switzerland. And together we coordinate our efforts to provide you many services from our website, as well as vast knowledge on protein characterization. Just a brief introduction into the different uni Uniprot resources. We start by importing information from external genomic sources, such as EMA and GenBank, for example. And then this information, the, the information provided goes into Unipark, our archive resource for protein sequences. Then we transform those sequences into protein accessions in the Uniprot knowledge base or Uniprot KB. We provide those data sets for, cluster, for clustering proteins based on sequence similarity into Uniref. And finally, we group proteins by their genome assemblies, creating proteomes. But today we are going to focus uh, on our most used resource, the Uniprot knowledge base. So the Uniprot KB is composed of two different data sets. SwissProt and Tremble. SwissProt contains records that, that have been reviewed, which means that a curator has read and went through the literature with uh, experimental data to characterize these proteins and add the information into the entry. We can identify these entries by the golden star icon with the star. At the moment, SwissProt has over half a million records. And on the other hand, we have Tremble, which contains records that uh, are not reviewed. And at the moment, we have 250 million records. And this can be identified by the gray icon. So talking a bit about the tools that we provide in our website, we are going to talk about Align and Blast in this webinar. So these tools are part of um, uh, sequence comparison set tools, and these have been used by biologists for a long time, and they are quite essential to understand uh, many uh, biological questions. They have been used for characterizing novel protein sequences, not only by inferring protein function by homology, but also to identify conserved regions that also contribute to that function. These element tools has, uh, ha have also been used for characterization of protein families and to explore evolutionary relationships between uh, the different species. They are also used on the curation on genome annotation to address many biological questions. The two main tools to do sequencing as analysis are the BLAST and the LINE. On one hand, BLAST finds local regions of similarity between sequences, and on the other, we have the sequence alignment, which compares sequences to find regions of similarity. 
So with BLAST, you will get information to understand what the function of the protein is and if it belongs to a specific protein family. With the sequence alignment, you will get the information to understand if specific regions or residues of a particular function uh, have a particular function, and it will allow you to visualize them better in this uh, alignment. Now that we know what these tools are used for, we are going to go. We are going to see where you can find and use them in the Uniprod website. So on the left, you will have our homepage, and if you zoom in at the top of the page, we'll have the tools displayed here. Another way to access these tools is to scroll down a page, the page a bit, and you can find those in these two blue and green buttons. Another way to access them is inside a protein entry page. Here it is an example of a human entry page. And in this page, you can find all the available information that Uniprot provides to you. If you look at the left panel, you have the different types of characterization of this protein. There is a section on the function of the protein, a section of different names and details about the taxonomy in which this protein was originally found in, the subcell location where it exists, information on post-transcriptional modifications, expression, interactions with other molecules, its 3D structure, some family and domain information about this protein, uh, the sequence itself and their isoforms, and finally, similar proteins to this one. Throughout the page, you will find different places where you have access to these tools. So one of these is at the top of the page. You have here uh, displayed the blast and the line. At the sequence section, you can use the canonical or isoform sequences to query uh, the tools. And further down the page, you can select uh, even to blast certain domains of the protein. You can select the proteins um, you, you want to analyze through different protein lists that you query in our website. And you can also select these proteins throughout the web page and add them to the basket. So once you collect all of those, you can open the basket and select the tool and select the, the, the proteins to run the tools with. We will cover first BLAST, which stands for the basic local alignment search tool. And as the name says, it finds a sim similarity between sequences and this lets you infer information, do phylogeny studies, and identify members of the same gene family. Once you have accessed the BLAST tool, you will get this page where you can add the protein sequences along with the header to the second box you can see here. Or alternatively, you can add uh, simply a Uniprot identifier to the first box and it will automatically get its sequence. After that, you can select the database to run BLAST against. You can select the whole Uniprot knowledge base or just the SwissProt, our re reviewed dataset. And also you can restrict the search to a specific taxon. Below that, you have advanced parameters if you are looking for something more specific. After adding all of this information, if you want to change, for example, the matrix of substitution or the uh, e-value threshold or the number of hits, then you can run the BLAST. And after this, you will be redirected into a dashboard where all the current running and completed jobs are displayed. And once the job is finished, you can click on it to see the results. So in this example, uh, we can find uh, the result page. We limited the results 
to 215 alignments in this blast. And their details are displayed here. On the right side of the page, we have the alignments themselves, where if you click on it, it will show a more detailed mapping below. On the left side of the page, you will choose how to filter the results, being this alignment, uh, being this by alignment score, identity, or evaluate, for example. And you can filter for reviewed or unreviewed proteins, uh, filter by taxonomy, by length of the protein, or other characteristics. On the top bar, you can select different tabs to get more information on the taxonomy distribution and on the heat distribution based on score identity and e values. And also, you can use the results outputted here as inputs into a new BLAST or a line analysis. Now we will see, um, we will have a look into the align tool. It is used, so this tool is used to align two or more sequences to find conserved regions of proteins and to infer homology and evolutionary relationships. And it uses the cluster omega program as its basis. Similarly to BLAST, once you access a line, you get a similar input page where you can add multiple sequences on the first box, again, by using the Uniprot, Uniprot identifiers, or manually add the sequences into the second box. Again, you are redirected to the dashboard to wait uh, until the results uh, have been processed. So this is the aligned result page. I usually click on the overview option here to be able to, to see the total alignment. So if you go there and you click on it, then you get a, a clear picture uh, of the whole alignment. And you can adjust the zoomed window to get a larger or smaller alignment of the individual amino acids on the bottom part of the page. So from here, you can investigate the sequences to understand what regions of these proteins are conserved. For example, if you are interested on serine and threonine, you can highlight them by clicking on Highlight Properties and select serine threonine. And with this, you can see here that those amino acids have been highlighted. Uh, there's many different properties and uh, different types of amino acids that you can select here in order for you to do your analysis. Another example is if you want to have a look into uh, the active sites. So you can go to select annotation and type active site. And then you can click the protein you want to see this. By clicking, you can see that uh, the active sites have been marked. And here we can see that one of them was found in position 431. And if you scroll there, you can see the alignment. <laughs> you can see the the the, the the information when you look into this specific amino acid. Also, you can see that uh, in this particular case, it, it's uh, marked uh, as a cysteine and it has been conserved in all three proteins in this alignment. So after analyzing your alignment, you can download it in different formats. So this is in order for you to be able to open this in other, uh, in multiple alignment software, being this Jalview or Mega, there's many software tools you can use. On the top above, you have access to a phylogenetic tree, a 
percent identity matrix. Uh, text output format of the alignment that you just done where the sequences are shown alongside a line of symbols that tells you how the sequence uh, performance was done in each amino acid position. And the next step shows you the parameters used in this alignment and also a job ID in case you want to revisit this page or you want to share these results with one of your colleagues. In the last tab, you can find how to run these exact alignments using curl if you want to run this job through a command line. Now, let's go through an example to have a better grasp on these tools. So let's consider Draculin, which is a protein that has been isolated from the vampire bat that acts as an anticoagulant in the blood coagulation cascade. Let's consider we want to know if this exists in other animals, uh, sorry, in other mammals. And if so, what are the functions of those homologs? And we are going to try to understand if these have 3D structures associated with them in uniprotein. Well, the first thing I would like to do is go to the Uniprot sub uh, search bar and look up for the word Draculin. This is the result page of that search. And we can see that the first hit here corresponds to the protein coming from the vampire bat. And you can verify this by looking into the last column. When opening up the protein, you can check its function and other information. You can then select the blast tool now. And if you do, it automatically selects these protein sequence. And let's just hit run to see all our results. So in the result page, we found uh, multiple hits. So let's narrow down uh, a bit our results in order to better understand what we have using the, using the multiple filters that we have available. So let's select only the reviewed proteins to confirm that the data that we are looking for has been curated. So you can click on reviewed on the left side. And after selecting the 15 different Swiss prot entries, you can tell that all of these come from mammals, including human. We also can answer our second question on what the function of the homologs are. And here we can see that all of these are lactotransferins. Also, note that you can see the details on each alignment. At the right side of each one, you have three values. The first one being the identity percentage, second one is the score and the third one is the, al um, the alignment E value. So let's see if there are any 3D structures associated with them. We can select uh, the filter uh, for the 3D structure and we can see that we have eight out of 15 um, proteins that have a 3D structure. So if you open one of them, for example, let's open the protein from human, you can read the function comment in more detail. In this case, this is an iron binding transport protein. And you also can see the can see and also interact with the 3D model in the structure section. Because the human lactotransferin is an iron binding a transport protein, the following question we can ask is if our Draculin protein also binds to iron. We can verify this by seeing if the iron binding sites are conserved between these two proteins, the human and the human electrotransferin and the Draculin from the bat. 
Well, let's go back to our blast result and select the alignment between draculin and the human lactotransferrin. Click on the alignment itself. So in order for you to, to look into uh, more in, in more detail uh, on this alignment. And after this, you can go to the bottom of the page to select the annotation and you can select binding site. And if you do, here you can see some amino acids from the human being, the human uh, that are now highlighted as the binding sites. And you can verify the same amino acid is present in Draculin, our query protein, in the same position. So if you click on one of these, you can see that uh, these are, in fact, binding sites to iron, which means that, yes, our Draculin is also an iron binding protein. And with this, uh, we had an, an, an overview on where to start searching proteins, what types of information does Uniprot provide with them, also how to navigate the results and uh, protein pages uh, on the protein pages, and finally, how to use BLAST and LINE in order to expand your analysis and interpret the results. And afterwards, if you want to export to your own software, you can do that. So if you have any questions or want to learn more about Uniprot, you can visit the Help Center by clicking Help in many places scattered across our website. And also you can email us directly, uh, sending us um, any question that you want, and we will, we will reply to you promptly. Now, this can be related to the tools that we talked about today or anything else related to coming from the, the, the protein content or you know different different subjects we will try to answer all of these questions and with this I would like to thank the, um, the uniprod teams and our funders as well thank you okay thank you very much Pedro for today's webinar and thanks everyone for, for joining in. So yeah, we can uh, take the questions now. So we have two questions already in. Uh, one question, I think Yvonne is already typing in the answer. I can take the second question for now. Is there a maximum size for sequence upload to BLAST or a line? Uh, by maximum size, I would I would interpret this as the number of proteins. Yep, I think Yvonne wants to answer as well. Yes, I also understand it as the number of queries. So you can um, query up to five sequences for a blast search. Okay. Uh, next question is: Can we do the same? Uh, with viral proteins, is there any specific database for this? You can use this with viral proteins as well, BLAST and ALIGN. Yes, it's for all the species. Okay. Uh, next one is, uh, thank you, wonderful presentation. Another question, do Uniprot sequences typically represent eukaryotes or, the, or they have prokaryote references too? We have both prokaryotes and eukaryotic sequences in Uniprot. We have a lot of bacteria sequences, actually, and also viral sequences. Very good. Thank you. Uh, how to find all active sites in the protein? Is there any annotation present in, in Uniprot? Yes, you can look at the, the protein entry in Uniprot and look at the annotations for sequence features. And if they have been annotated by one of our curators, you will find them with a link to the literature, or then we also have um, rules predicting those sites. Then um, there will be um, evidence with 
with the rule attached to it. Thank you. Can we use it for metagenomics analysis of microbes? Can we use Uniprot for that? I'm not sure what uh, the user would like to analyze exactly with the metagenomic analysis of microbes, but I mean, it's quite, what we show here is limited to a few sequences to do the blast and then see the the, the conservation or then the alignment to analyze um, regions of conservation. I don't know if Pedro has something to add. Uh, not really. I was also wondering if um, this user could expand on this question because I'm not sure what type of metagenomic analysis uh, you are referring. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing I can suggest is probably we have a resource called Magnify from EBI, and that's all about uh, metagenomics. So I think if you go to Magnify, I can include that link soon in, in chat. So if you go to Magnify, that's probably a good resource if you want to do a metagenomic resource for, for microbes. And we also have uh, Ensemble resource. They also have a, a section for, for bacteria. So I think you might find some tools there as well. Okay, uh, so are these tools available to run locally on larger data set or is this uh, overkill generally? Yes, for larger data sets, we suggest to use the API to, to have programmatic access and to use it through the API. As I said, the on, on the website, it's limited to, to a certain number. Um, another question. Can I use same approach in Uniprot for nucleotide sequence? I have nucleotide sequence and struggling to analyze it. Mm -hmm. Or you can mainly do protein sequences. Uh, yes, you can do nucleotide sequences as well. Okay. So you can um, look for nucleotide sequence search against nucleotide sequence or then use nucleotide sequence and use the translation of that to search for protein sequence. Great, thank you. Uh, for finding, uh, to find the different closely related sequences, this settings or database or DB to set in, in BLAST P. Similarly, for very diverse set of sequence to query which DB Blast P setting to be used? Um, I guess if if the user is referring to the parameters being used, um, well, I I guess it really depends on the type of biological question you are looking for. There's no real one thing you you can do is using a uh, different a matrix or a substitution matrix. So for example, Blossom is preferred uh, to, to be used for closely related, closely related sequences, for example. Okay. But all the other sets, it's just a matter of uh, experimentation. Okay, thank you. Um, I think you answered this question already. Yvonne, uh, are these tools available to run locally or from the command line? So I think we have an API with you. Yes, right? you can access it there. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Can, can we find what you just explained in the website, tutorial website, or how to find all active site of the protein? Okay, so it's question related to the active site of protein, what you explained. Is there some guideline or tutorial available. So from there is a general tutorial on the use of Uniprot that is online on the training page. And I mean, there are uh, uh, a lot of YouTube videos for more specific questions that can be looked at and also some 
publications on the use on BLAST and the line as well that came out last year. Yeah. That, yeah, could help uh, in the analysis. Yeah, And the email that we send usually after the webinar that you will receive by tomorrow, I will include the links for the Unipro tutorials that we have on our training website. Okay, thank you. Um, again, another question about command line. I think you have answered this. Um, how will you sequence the genomes of PPLO and, and uh, prions? So I'm not sure what PPLOs are, but um, we are also not sequencing specialists at Uniprot. So we really focus on the analysis of protein sequences and conserved domains and features and uh, functions of proteins. So I think we are not the right people to answer that question. Uh, okay, somebody is asking for the recorded presentation. Yes, so this webinar has been recorded and we will share the uh, recording very soon on the website as well as by email. Um, okay, another one. Are our protein structures presented real or validated structures resolved by crystallography or experiments, or is it theoretical by AlphaFold or similar softwares? So we have both on our website. We show uh, protein structures um, that are experimentally solved, and you can filter those structures also at the bottom where we display them either by looking for um, structures from PDB or then we have the predictions from AlphaFold. Yeah. Next one is, uh, there are multiple entries for protein isomers in Uniprot. Which canonical isomers should be used for a particular protein? So we have in one protein entry, there can be several isoforms, uh, isoform sequences. And we um, display the canonical isoform in Uniprot, which is um, um, according to the main select uh, in agreement with um, other resources such as NCBI and also the, it's uh, uh, often the longest isoform, but not only. It's also about the the expression of the isoform. A, in protein, the structure defines the function of a protein. To predict the function, we do sequence alignment, but membrane protein had less uh, crystal structure. So how we can get over this problem if you want to target membrane proteins? Yes, so uh, one way to so, um, go with that, um, maybe the, um, I could suggest to use AlphaSeq, where you have then a predicted protein structure, and then it looks, uh, and you can look for similarity with this predict, uh, structure prediction that may give you um, more insight into the protein function. Also, um, just I'm I didn't entirely understand the, these um, the the question, but there are also other ways for you to infer the protein function. So we have automatic annotation systems that um, try to predict what the protein do and its characteristics, and we have that available to you. So if you want to have a look, uh, we have a software called Unifier where you can input the, the sequence and the software will try to predict what the protein does. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can we do interaction analysis between two proteins? On Uniprot, I guess. Um, not with these tools that Pedro presented now, but um, we display interaction information on Uniprot either in the CC subunit comments um, where we show um, like secondary protein-protein interactions and tertiary proteins um, 
structures or, or complex formations. And we also show data um, from intact in Uniprot that can be accessed via the crosslink. Okay, thank you. Um, what is the best approach to analyze features and uh, conserved regions from an alignment of very similar amino acid sequences? Well, uh, after the alignment, you have several uh, options. And you can search, for example, uh, you can try to understand if there are domains that are common am among this. Also, active sites, binding sites, all of these are really important to determine the function of a protein. Um, yeah, I would guess I would start with those, but again, there are so many things that you can you you can determine. Uh, there are so many things, uh, characteristics of the protein that that you can look into. But I think these ones would be the most uh, the first ones that I would look into. Yeah, thank you. Is there a function which allows uh, exploration of protein drug or protein protein interaction? Uh, yes, so I mentioned the protein-protein interaction comments before that we show for every protein entry in SwissProt and the crosslink to intact, which is a protein interaction resource that uh, um, we also show information. And then we also have um, crosslinks to Happy at Hemel. Um, where you can follow up on more information about protein drug information. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have available data on MIC protein studies in human? Um, yes, I'm sure we have uh, the human MIC protein entry. Um, in Uniprot that you can, where you can look up uh, available information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the align tool, we can highlight the transmembrane for only one protein of the alignment. I think this uh, question is not complete. Uh, um, so in, uh, you you can select you can select. Uh, what what you want, for example, you can select transmembrane uh, uh, segments, or you can select uh, binding sites. For example, and you you need to select which protein you want this to be seen, this to be shown, and after that you compare that site, that specific location, to all the other ones in that same position. So this is how our our tool works. So you select your desired protein, and then you can verify if that uh, amino acid or that region is similar in all the other proteins. Okay. Um, okay. Is there any score highlighting the conserved or non-conserved amino acids or region? You have a, an identity percentage. For example, you have a, a matrix. And also, if you want to visualize this a bit better, you have a phylogenetic tree. Uh, one, I think it's a very general question. What is Uniprot ID? How can we find it? So we provide unique identifiers for every protein entry in Uniprot. And you can find that by searching for your protein of interest in the Uniprot data base. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to add to the previous question about the drug protein relationships that we also link out to um, open targets that I forgot to mention before. So that's also a place to find more information about um, drugs. Okay. Um, from the identity, sco identity scores, how well can we know the homology between two sequences? Well, an identity score. Uh, you you have you have two 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 main scores. One is the identity percentage, and the other one is the bit score. The identity percentage is just tells you um, 
how these two proteins can map to each other, how identical they are. And the bit score is um, uh, it's a score that keeps summing, uh, keeps keeps adding up as long as you have more amino acids in common. So there's no there's no maximum to to, to this number. Uh, if you are asking about on the on the first number, the, the maximum is 100 percent, and on the bit score there's no maximum. So it really you can I think you can use that value. Uh, if you want to compare different types of alignment and see what is the one that has the best bit score, but it doesn't have a, a limit. As long the the longer the protein is, or the the longer the alignment is, the the better the this bit score is going to be. Thank you.